In this video, we're going to take a look at the modulus function. So the modulus of a number is a non-negative value of that number. So for example, if I take the modulus of the number 7 here, the way we denote that is the number 7 between these two vertical bars. Okay? So the modulus of the number 7 is simply equal to 7. And if we consider the modulus then of minus 7, in this case then, we'd get positive 7. Okay, like we said, the modulus of a number is a non-negative value of that number. Now, because we're talking about the modulus function here, let's denote how we would typically express the modulus function. So what we say here is y is equal to the modulus of the function f of x. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to consider two cases. So when f of x here, or a function f of x, is greater than or equal to zero, then in this case, the modulus of the function f of x is equal to the, the function itself. So it's just equal to f of x. Okay. Now, when f of x here is strictly less than zero, then in this case, the modulus of the function, so try that again, the modulus of the function f of x it's going to be equal to minus f of x. Okay. And this is quite useful because we can use this now to solve any equation that involves modulus functions. Okay. So let's say we want to solve here. Let's say we want to solve the modulus of 3x plus 1 is equal to 10. Okay. Then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to consider the positive argument. This is what we say is the positive argument, and then we consider the negative argument. So we start off with the positive argument here. So for the positive argument, well, in that case, then we're saying f of x here, our function f of x, is greater than or equal to zero. But in that case, then when we take the modulus of that function f of x, we simply get the function itself. So f of x here is 3x plus 1. So if we start off with a positive argument saying that f of x is greater than or equal to 0. What I'm going to simply get here is 3x plus 1 is equal to 10. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is solve for x. So subtract 1 off both sides. We get 3x is equal to 9. And then divide both sides here by 3. And we get that x is equal to 3. Okay. And that should hopefully seem quite straightforward. Now what we're going to consider here is the negative argument. So in this case, then we're saying that the function f of x here is strictly less than zero. When I now take the modulus here of my function f of x, so just ignore this little dot here. In fact, let me just quickly erase that. When I now take the modulus here of my function f of x, this would be equal to minus f of x. Remember, f of x here is 3x plus 1. We get minus 3x plus 1, and that's equal to 10. Okay, to expand this bracket here, I'm going to get minus 3x minus 1 is equal to 10. And again, all I need to do here now is solve for x. So add 1 to both sides, so I'm going to get minus 3x is equal to 11. And then finally, divide both sides here by minus 3. We get that x is equal to minus 11 divided by 3. Okay. And there we have it. So that would give us our two solutions there to this modulus equation. Okay. So that's everything we need there for our introduction to the modulus function. So that doesn't cover everything that we actually need for the modulus function. In a couple of videos, we're going to take a look at actually sketching modulus functions. But for now, that's all we need here in this video. So what we're going to do now is just take a look at one practice question here. So if we just take a look now at this practice question here, we're asked to solve the modulus of 4x minus 1 is equal to 4 minus x. So to solve this equation here, we need to consider the positive argument and the negative argument. So in the case of the positive argument here, and this is where my function here f of x is greater than or equal to 0. So for the positive argument, remember, we just simply get the function itself. My function here is 4x minus 1. So for the positive argument then, we get 4x minus 1. 
is equal to 4 minus x. So we get 4 minus x there. So all I need to do now is solve for x here. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I'm going to get 4x is equal to 5 minus x there. And I'm going to add x to both sides here. I get 5x is equal to 5. And then if we divide both sides here by 5, we get that x is equal to 1. So that's the first solution there. That's for the positive um, argument there. So now for the negative argument here. So for the negative argument here. Well, that's when my function f of x is strictly less than 0. And in that case, then, I get the negative here of my function f of x. So I get minus 4x minus 1. And that's equal to 4 minus x there. So expand the left hand side here, I get minus 4x minus minus 1, that would give me positive 1, and that's equal to 4 minus x. And again, all I need to do here now is solve for x. So I'm going to start off by adding 4x to both sides, so I'm going to get 1 is equal to 4, and then minus x plus 4x, that would give me positive 3x. And what I'm going to do here now is subtract 4 off both sides. I get that 3x here is equal to 1 minus 4, which would give me minus 3. So therefore, x would be equal to minus 3 here divided by 3. I will get that x equal to minus 1 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution there. So we've got x equal to 1 and x equal to minus 1. That gives the solution to that practice question there. And that's it brings the end of this video on the modulus function. In the next video, we're going to take a look at functions and mappings.